Everton are in the relegation places, are bottom of their Europa League group, and have just sacked their manager. So today I ask, why are Everton so incredibly It's time for a big pee. In eighth position, I have Everton. A lot of people have been going on about their great window and are predicting top four. I'm not all that impressed with their window, though. They've replaced a 25 goal a season striker with some £5 million Joe from Malaga. And someone who was deemed trash worldwide just a couple of months ago, but now is apparently good enough to leave the line for a top four club. Away from that, they spent all their money on players from Sunderland, Burnley, Ajax and Southampton's second choice right back. Overall, I don't think they've improved drastically anywhere, but have gotten much worse up front. And I don't see them scoring enough goals to challenge high up. Even before the season started, it was blatantly clear what Everton needed. A replacement for Lukaku. And a replacement for Lukaku they did not get. To be fair, looking back, a lot of experts lauded Everton's window. <laughs> so their best player was Lukaku, the striker who's now been sold. And I'm not convinced they've adequately replaced him. But that's always the way. I remember when Spurs sold Bell and people were talking about how they could push on now. You've got some good signings, mate. You've done well in the transfer market. What do you think of your replacements, though? You've got some great, great signings. I think I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say this. Tottenham have made the best signings this summer, I'd say. Um, yeah, we've made some very good signings. All internationals, all good internationals as well. Um, we've added another Belgian to the ranks with, yeah. with Chadley as well. And then the exact same thing happened with Liverpool when they sold Suarez. Why people seem to think selling your best player and replacing him with seven or eight average players is a good idea, I will never know. Don't worry, this isn't just a pundit bashing channel. Now, just because of some buds who think they have football knowledge but only get paid because they have big names and they're playing names. Okay, maybe it is, but let's just get on with the video. Ronald Koeman arrived on Mersey's title at the beginning of last season with his stock higher than it had ever been before. After miraculously guiding Southampton to sixth place and signed a bumper £6 million a year contract, he was promptly joined by Steve Walsh, the chief scout of Leicester City, who was highly praised after their title win, having brought in the likes of Riyad Mahrez and N'Golo Kante from France, as well as Jamie Vardy from Fleetwood. This boosted morale among Evertonians, who had just gone through the depressing final season of Roberto Martinez. A very decent season followed, which included two more victories over David Moyes and a seventh place finish, meaning a return to European football. Koeman was heavily linked with the Barcelona job, but stayed per Everton, where they seemed to finally have an owner who was ready to invest. And talks for the highly anticipated big new stadium had begun. This meant that even when Everton's best player in Romelu Lukaku left for Manchester United, spirits were still very much high. Farhad Mashiri put his money where his mouth is, spending hundreds of millions on players, including a transfer record fee of 45 million pounds for Gilfie Sigurdsson. Someone who Big Pete feels is probably slightly too good for Everton. This all put extremely high expectations on Ronald Koeman's shoulders. Something he hadn't properly experienced since his brief spell at the Mestalla with Valencia. These were expectations he ultimately was not able to deliver upon and the Dutchman has paid the price for it. But my question is, why wasn't he able to deliver upon these expectations? Okay, I think even if we weren't all before this video, we are now all very much aware that Romelu Lukaku left Everton in the summer. And while losing your star striker would hit any team really hard, I think it had an especially big impact with Everton, as they literally had no other strikers. They signed Sandro Ramirez, who has really struggled to adapt to the Premier League, along with Wayne Rooney, who despite having his moments, isn't going to be able to lead the line for a team pushing higher up in the league. All that means that there is a big hoe up front and the Toffees are seriously lacking firepower in that department. But people acting as if striker is the only problem for Everton at the moment is a joke. It's not as if they're creating bundles of chances without that one person to finish it off. For me, Everton have no cohesion whatsoever when they're going forward. It's as if no one in the team knows A, what to do when they have the ball, and B, anyone else in the team. But it's not just going forward, they're in absolute shambles all over the pitch. There is no chemistry or quality for that matter in defence, with each centre-back being dropped at some point this season. And Koeman has to take the brunt of the blame for that. He's taken a team who, last year, knew exactly what to do when they got the ball. Get it to Lukaku. I remember his goals away at Man City and Sunderland last season, which just summed Everton up. But now that same team is absolutely clueless as to what to do when they win the ball back. Sometimes they'll play a long ball up to Rooney, other times they'll sit back and try and break on teams with the pace of Calvert-Lewin and Vlasic. But then other times they'll look to play narrow through the middle with the bucket loads of centre midfielders and number 10s they have. There is no clear system, style of play or identity in that team at the moment, which is a big problem. 
All the successful teams over the years have had a clear identity. Playing 11 headless chickens who are improvising every move will lead you nowhere. Players have to know exactly what they have to do and be confident in their decision making. 90 minutes does not give you enough time to doubt yourself and still win. So as much as people may feel Everton have signed good players, it's important to remember that good players get you nowhere if they can't or don't know how to play together. Everton's season reeks of improvisation. The players improvising on the pitch may stem from the fact that Everton have had no clear plan in place from the offset. They took a ridiculously lackadaisical approach in the summer. Lukaku pretty much revealed in March he would be leaving, yet it took an age to see him shipped out of the club. Furthermore, the big target of the summer, Gilfie Sigerson, definitively revealed he wanted to join Everton before pre-season. And Swansea said very early on they'd be happy to let him go for 50 million. Yet Everton played around with the final 5 million, eventually pushing through the 45 million pound deal. But that came after the start of the season. And as Gilfie refused to travel with the Swans to America, this meant he hadn't had a pre-season to prepare himself for the new season. Another one of Everton's big summer signings was an opponent who impressed in a Europa League qualifier. All this tells me Koeman and Everton had absolutely no plan in place for the transfer window and how they'd go about replacing Lukaku. But even after the window, Ronald has still looked like he doesn't have a clue. He's been dropping players left, right and centre and has been changing formation every other week. Everton have looked a million miles the most confused club this season. With the players often looking like they've woken up in Aberdeen despite only wanting to go to York. Last start, Montreal. The start is Montreal. What? Are we really in Montreal? This confusion and lack of direction left the owners with no choice but to let go Koeman. But the fact the owners were left with no choice but to sack a manager, who they trusted with hundreds of millions of pounds in the transfer market only a couple months prior, shows that the confusion and lack of direction isn't just with Koeman, but with Everton as a whole at the moment. This leads to the question of where do Everton go from here? The only bookie's favourite for the job is Sean Dyche. And for me, this is exactly the sort of appointment Everton need. He very much has an identity, regardless of the players he has at his disposal. He is very confident and assured in his style of play. His players go out onto the pitch knowing exactly what they need to do to get a result. Which is how Burnley have managed to get results away at Chelsea, Tottenham, Liverpool and Everton this season. He's twice got Burnley promoted, which shows he knows how to instill a winning mentality and can cope with a loaded fixture list. Which will help with cup competitions, an area Everton desperately needs success. Plus he knows how to get the best out of Michael Keane and a defence. But if relegation threatened Everton aren't able to lure Sean Dyche away from European challenging Burnley, then I would definitely suggest bringing in a manager who has a clear identity. That way the players will either buy into it or be gotten rid of. Because for me, that is the only way to get them out of this characterless, confusing mess that they are stuck in. So in answer to my question, Everton are so incredibly shit because they lack identity and quality in both boxes. And the clear way to improve that would be bringing in a manager with a clear identity who knows how to get the most out of players at both ends of the pitch. Thanks for watching the video, guys! If you did enjoy, please be sure to smash the like button like you're one of these teams and the like button is Everton. Subscribe if you're new and please share with your friends. I'll see you soon! They took a ridiculously lackadaisical reproach in that. Yeah, yeah, you can fuck off.